I am I am pretty excited it, it says on my daily diary <laughs> <laughs> okay okay I got inspired to take science because of a french brother who was deeply into electronics try and buy try and buy <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you are in a decent enough company talk to your manager say i don't know what i like can i try this a lot of senior engineers senior mobile engineers know that their cto doesn't even know about mobile and like he can run the tech team so so they say okay maybe you know this is the career is limited here and they move and that's one of the reasons i'm not able to hire senior mobile engineers what are the coachable gaps in this guy say, what is that like, things you can teach him in a month or two and i'm like oh man these weaknesses can be classified as coachable yeah. gaps and things that i can't hmm. like i as a person would probably not be able to change so that's the first advice for a lot of people who are trying to scale all of these problems thankfully the, the problems that come with microservices in last 10 years we have documented them and said okay these are all the things that you will go through hey this is arna from scaler and uh, today we have a new episode of the podcast and uh, i have with me uh, jitendra agarwal from uh, cast 24 he is the global ct of cast 24 and formerly vp of engineering at hotstar uh, he has taken out his time to come and talk with us uh, and we will be asking him a lot of questions Hi, we have with us today Jeet, who is uh, global CT of Cars Twenty Four, formerly VP of Engineering at Hotstar. So, thank you so much for taking out your time to talk with us today. And up, thank you so much for inviting. I'm I'm pretty excited. It it says on my daily diary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, I think first question to start off with would be something that a lot of people, even when I posted on Twitter that we are having this conversation, had that. Okay, what does like a day in a life of a CTO look like? So, from like. how do you manage your time do you actually get time to code a bit or is it mostly about people management how does that go yeah i have been cto three times okay this is my third time and every time uh, my day looks different um there was a time when i had just three people in the team right so i would say 35% of the code was mine i used to code day in and day out right here i spend a lot of time on um uh, I have three things um, a lot of time on people I talk to a lot of people I uh, send random invites to product managers business people tech team that hey let's chat and I'm trying to understand like what is blocking them right what do they not like what can we improve uh, in processes in our policies how can their developer experience be better right so I spend a lot of time on people I spend some time on reviewing RCAs, PRDs, plans, right? And I would say 20% time I also spend on hiring. Um, I I don't take all the interviews. Thankfully, I have a lot of good leaders in the team who can take the final call and say, "Hey, I want to make an offer to this guy." Right, right, right. Yeah. I I would say, can I get time to code? Yes. Do I code for Cast 24? I haven't done a single line of code for Cast 24. I spend time on the weekends or in late nights learning stuff doing POCs uh trying to find out how does this work hey. um and uh, personal side projects <laughs> yeah this is because I like to do it this right. is because uh you know I feel like if I am far away from code I don't understand what my team is doing there is no empathy right 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 there is a friend who who is basically a sales guy and you know so sales guys and finance guys are like often they don't really like each other uh, <laughs> and uh, he recently became a treasurer in our society okay now he's like oh now i understand what these guys meant when they said oh this will not be good for audit and you know we need this data and this detail this level of empathy mm-hmm. is needed right uh, engineers often say no oh, business does not understand us so or yeah. product does not understand us this is complex and if i don't understand this either like this is bad yeah. <laughs> so that's why i code on the side uh, but m- often i would look for how can i uh, support my team the best do they want my team my help in hiring i'll go all out just hire if if i feel like i can do better by focusing on retention culture what not i'll focus on that right and and that's that's my advice for people too that don't go away from coding it just doesn't help but uh, at least at senior leadership do what the team needs at that point and uh, does if 
that means uh, assemble chairs to it i have done it at least once <laughs> Uh, the other question also a lot of people wanted to know was that uh, for for a team like say Cast 24, fairly big team. So how does the tech team look like? Like how many teams are there? Uh, like like what does the, does the leadership look like? And how do different types of people at different seniorities spend their time? What is it like? Oh, oh that's a good one. And there is no formula. Um, right. As I said, I was part of this small team, three people. All of us were coding. We built the basic product. and then uh, all of us were building growth growth was a focus and then some growth happened and all of us were looking at customer experience and then all of us were focusing on growth and then we hired more people we said okay if you guys look at growth we'll look at customer experience then we hired more people and then finance guys like can we also get some automation done right so as your teams become bigger i would try to make independent teams that are not like trying to find bandwidth in other teams every every sprint saying hey can you do this for us so that this can be doable it's not easy i have failed at it multiple times it's not perfect yet but that's what that's the attempt that we are doing that is can we have independent teams that can execute on their vision every engineer knows who their customer is the right. car seller in uae is my customer i will solve for their pain right car buyer in india is my customer or somebody is taking a loan is a customer or some somebody who is just going to customer uh, who is who is about to sell the car and with an app and noting down all the defects in a car right that's the customer right so my team should know who their customers are what their pain points are and that's how we are organized uh, we have independent teams for each country right now uh, we have a small platform team that supports all of these but that's a that's i would say a horizontal layer and it doesn't come in the way with every sprint hmm. there is some duplication the creating tools for the other teams maybe yeah. right there is some duplication <laughs> <laughs> and i think it's okay if if the business is not being stopped if the business is doing well if the product teams and engineering teams know that they own their own destiny right one thing that i've also realized is i have continuously refactored my teams right that is hey does this team make sense with this leader does this team make sense for this product manager they seem to be talking a whole lot maybe they should be at the same team right right or or this team or this group of people within a large team are are so independent that they can actually just bootstrap a new group altogether so the refactoring is something that i have done a lot we are a relatively small team uh, less than i would say less than 200 very like 200 is uh, a very high number for us yeah 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 uh, so uh, one thing just wanted to maybe sort of expand on this question a little bit also first of all i think maybe a smaller question is that uh, do you promote your engineers to go and talk to the customers and how much do they do that and how important uh, is that like like actually talking to somebody who is buying a car or selling a car or taking a loan uh, and then somebody who is just you know creating the core code of that how important it is to sort of be in touch i think it's fairly important and i think that's why a lot of people like to work for b2c companies right that is i can buy the car i can sell my car right and i can experience what the customer is experiencing yeah yeah i mean as much as i like b2b businesses and they are adding a lot of value for a lot of engineers it just becomes easier to understand hey what is the customer thinking about right right, right. right. and even if i don't have a program to say hey go and meet customers while we encourage it during ux studies and all like i talk to my friends and half of them have told me that oh i am in the us my parents have sold your sold my car to you or i am buying my second car instead of buying a new car i bought uh, a car from you right so these are these are customers yes. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody who tells me hey i am buying a planning to buy a car from you or i am planning to sell my car to you i say okay if you go for competitors it's okay for you to buy and sell from competitors but you know you have to still give me feedback <laughs> what could we do better right and i think uh, thankfully we don't have to really have an institutionalized program for doing this for b2c companies yeah yeah, yeah. our friends give us enough feedback <laughs> that's true that's true 
sometimes like we ourselves get feedback for example let like zomato i would feel very connected to what i'm making because exactly. every day i'm ordering food on the same app so of course e- exactly and uh, sometimes a friend comes and says ki uh, this button does not work and you know, it felt like okay personal attack <laughs> i have to go and fix it myself <laughs> So uh, yeah yeah this is the eating your own dog food yeah, yeah, yeah. in b2c it's easy <laughs> yeah 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 uh the, the other question more from a you know uh, what i hear from some friends who are actually starting to sort of grow their companies at that stage with leading teams uh, right they feel some sort of a challenge around uh, you know tech teams uh, getting to understand the business what does the business need and a lot of times sometimes there is some empathy breakdown happens yeah. like okay the business teams are coming and telling us to do this they don't understand or you know they don't understand how we are building it uh, so any tips around how this gets solved like i mean obviously you have had to solve it multiple times so how does this improve i think the this is one of the biggest responsibility of the engineering leaders and product leaders that bridging that gap yeah making sure somebody who just join because they like coding yeah uh, understands that the joy of car being bought car being delivered is immense and the customers actually go ahead and call all their friends and family saying we car away mm-hmm. i i have done it so okay. i i know right and this is our responsibility as as engineering leaders product leaders we have to say if you are doing this this is what the customer pain we solve for if we are doing this this is the growth that the company has if you do this in a particular way something that you have suggested we would have actually taken it 6 months if we spend another way to do it so you have added value and it may not be revenue impact all the time yeah right but this you are adding value there is an impact you are you are making lives better for people those narratives should come from tech leaders engineering okay. leaders at the same time engineering leaders have to care about business if engineering leaders don't care about business and they're like i want to build the perfect stuff and that will just fail right 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 i was reading an article which said are you playing to play and be perfect like roger federer has a perfect style he still manages to win yeah he does uh, single handed backhands which are insanely difficult yeah and are you playing to win a lot of people have bad style they just they they are playing to win a lot of businesses a lot of startups have to understand that they are playing to win first yeah and and then sure they can improve their their style they can improve the delivery and uh, i call it like you can pay the debt later but it's okay to take some debt from time to time got it got it got it understood uh next question is, is more about delving into your journey so so like you know back from school college days to you know so many years in uh, tech and now leading so many companies so what has been the story like what have been like sort of inspirations and how have has all this happened oh so i i got inspired to do engineering or rather take science i i knew i would not do engineering uh, because of some reasons but Uh, I got inspired to take science because of a French brother who was deeply into electronics and uh, used to build random stuff. I I kind of bought a lot of lot of registers and diodes and I I think I could read registers very easily at that point. Uh that's what kind of inspired me to take science. Uh, I got in college just I would say because they allowed me to. <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh, It's so a third year onwards. I started working full time. So dot com boom time, and uh, I was passing out after a couple of uh, after one more year, and I didn't want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so I started working in third year. Uh, I've done three startups so far. Um, I've worked with uh, telecom, worked with uh, edtech, worked with fintech. This is my first e-commerce. Okay. When Gaju called me, Forecast Twenty Four, I was like. this is an insane opportunity that i'm getting to you know do this at this stage of the company right amazing growth they have actually they were insane to think we could sell cars and buy cars online and they were right <laughs> 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 they, like of course they thought about it 6 plus years ago but yeah. uh, it's just amazing right uh, the growth path is amazing uh, we're solving some good problems not not everybody who is doing doing e-commerce has their goods with four wheels not everybody who is doing e-commerce um, buys from customers first 
refurbishes and not everybody is asking for 5 lakh rupees online <laughs> right 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 those are interesting problems to solve yeah 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 uh one one uh, maybe a small follow up on this question i got on twitter when we met that thread but somebody asked that as a leader like whether it's a product leader or an engineering leader how do you like make this decision that i will make this place my home for the next phase of my life because you know joining as a cto means that okay i'm going to be devoting a next phase of my life to this uh, obviously that's not like getting a sd job give some interviews okay this company pays well i go there not like that so how does this decision get made like what are the factors that come to your mind Yeah I don't think I have cracked it I haven't completed 5 years in any company <laughs> though honestly when I join a company I have this discussion can I work here for 5 to 10 years right right and if I if the answer is no I probably not join that company mm-hmm. so that's that's uh, what I ask myself right I still manage to leave in 3 years 4 years right as i said Well, life keeps the happening. The kind of opportunity <laughs> that Cars Twenty Four is, yeah. I wouldn't wait for it. At, like, I don't think uh, anybody in my position would would say no to this kind of uh, company. Okay, sure, we don't have hundred percent joining rate, but <laughs> <laughs> but still, uh, it's just a, a very very good place. We are a real business, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, you know, talking about uh, the the other part, which is sort of these days. it's called i think it was called the great resignation yeah, then people yeah, calling yeah. it the great reshuffle uh, and, and obviously from the data that even we see at scaler was a lot of people getting placed lot of different different companies a lot of people switching companies as well that's happening and you know compensations have also gone up so market is in a bit of a churn uh, so in this sort of environment uh, uh, like as a tech company that is growing what are like sort of key ingredients to like both hire a team and then you know keep them here make them happy and they think that okay this is the place that i want to be mm-hmm. so i would say hiring and keeping people happy what are different things i yeah, think yeah, yeah. as far as hiring is concerned i think it's it's a lot of what's most popular hmm. right and if you if you look at uh, recommendation systems the what's most popular is what gets sold <laughs> yeah everybody is doing python okay python is a thing or everybody is doing golang in terms of tech stack or work from home is popular or, yeah. or let's say four days a week would become popular and companies would do that i would not i would not say uh, hiring is the big challenge i would say retention is where we should be focusing on these are good guys who have been with us for 2 3 years and and why are they leaving yeah yeah right now I have lost team members so I I would not say I've mastered this. <laughs> But I think engineering managers and engineering leaders can play a big role. Hmm. Are your team members excited about what they're doing? I said are you telling them the impact of their work? Right. They just I'm just doing this because somebody in the business thought so. And that's depressing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Of course you can pay a lot of money and and still retain some people. Yeah, yeah. All right. Are uh, these guys excited about what the company is doing? are they excited about the company's vision right 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 people will work hard people will work at one third the money i have done this if i feel like what the company is doing is amazing right this is what the world needs right and if your team is convinced that what you're doing is is actually good what you're doing adds value to their career they get to learn a lot yeah then hopefully they'll stay I am saying hopefully because again, it's a we we could say so somebody uh, somebody I think I read it on Twitter and it was a good good way to look at it. So from the popularity based, what do engineers need to engineers from cohort based personalization? That is, engineers from one to three years experience are looking for learning. Yeah. Engineers from three to five are looking for building their career. Yeah. Engineers with eight to plus. Uh, or 12 plus experience are looking at business impact yeah i mean it sounds good it's a, it's a good enough cohort personalization but i mean it's an n is equal to one personalization that we have to look at hmm. somebody is looking for uh, becoming an engineering manager in 2 years somebody is looking to become an architect in 2 years 
somebody doesn't know what they want to do somebody is looking to do an mba in 3 to 4 years somebody is looking to do a startup i have a lot of people who have told me i want to do a startup right i am working with you because i want to learn how to run an engineering team in a startup and i'll do a startup that's that's so common in in at least yeah. my team sometimes people are very upfront also about that yeah. that i am going to be here for a few years i just want to learn how it works and then i want to yeah and as as engineering managers uh can you be non judgmental about that and say yes okay you're still giving me your best i'm good enough yeah yeah, yeah. Right. i will support you i will think about your growth if you want to do this more i will be cognizant of this and i'll create opportunities for you right right and of course feedback on growth areas appreciation engineering managers can just impact this a whole lot sure if the company is just not giving you money and increments and not giving bonuses and stuff then doesn't matter how much you try you lose people yeah yeah but keeping keeping the money part saying okay everybody is paying decent amount of money these things matter am i excited about working do i like working there do i have friends there which is kind of missing in the remote working environment but yeah we are we are still trying that yeah sure. people stay back saying i have a lot of friends here i don't know what i'll do in the next company it's probably not good for their career but people do that yeah yeah, yeah. so i would say any is equal to one personalization i have personally tried to look at what are the derailers of my team members what do they not like what are the things that they like what is it that i can double down on yeah and i can also give you a disclaimer there was a guy who i said this guy is super happy i know what he wants he is not looking to leave and the next day he came and said jeep I got a <laughs> got an offer from the dream company this year which I always wanted to join. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so I would say engineering managers can affect this a whole lot and focus on retention or rather focus on people's growth and if that is happening yeah people would would stay. Right right right. So this was probably about like what orgs and leaders can do. asking probably a very related question from an individual perspective and this is something i love to ask people who have like gone through the whole journey uh, right uh i feel like we're saying a cohort base yeah. like people who are in the 5 6 7 years experience i i hear from them a lot is that uh, they are having this question in their mind that what is the sort of next step like should i go into the ic track become like a principal architect uh, what does that hold for me that future or should i go into engineering management some people also thinking about switching into product yeah yeah there's also a very valid path that people take uh, so uh, some of the times i see i mean sometimes the question is motivated by the fact that okay this person gives me the orders to what to do so i want to become that person so uh, to to people who are sort of trying to make that uh, decision and that judgment uh, what would you give in terms of advice is like how to take this decision like like next like people who are sort of mid senior level in engineering what like the next 10 years what should i do and and how do i pick my path accordingly so any tips around this i think you are asking the wrong person i have taken the ic2 manager to ic2 manager to ic2 manager three times but then you are the right person no? <laughs> so so like try and buy try and buy <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you are in a decent enough company talk to your manager right. say i don't know what i like yeah. can i try this and they can say okay Uh, you know, this is a small set of people. Lead this team, deliver this. See what parts you liked, what parts you didn't like. Um, or um, I want to see what PM life looks like. Okay, you know, here is a problem. Yeah. Come up with a set of solutions with this with your team. Say how you want to build this. Yeah. Write your PRD. Write your requirements. Do the stakeholder management communication. Say yeah. how you like. Yeah. And um, I think unfortunately a lot of our decisions are based on what we don't like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so if you don't like responsibility of of outcomes without being able to affect them directly <laughs> yeah, by coding, yeah. uh, some people just don't like it, um, and uh, some people are like, "Hey, I'm just doing stakeholder management. I'm like, I'm not building anything," which is. Right. which comes as a shock to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and some people just want to be closer to the customer, want to be closer to the business. Yeah. And they are okay sacrificing uh, coding for that and it's okay totally 
I think totally fair call to make. Right. And uh, at least from my experience, the journey back is not. Uh, there isn't a cost to this journey back. I know plenty of people who are for engineers. went into product management for 2 years came back became engineers i know somebody who started the career as a product manager right and 3 years down the line realized oh they want to code hmm hmm big deal big deal right right so i would say yeah try and buy <laughs> not Talk be to your managers. not be afraid of the opportunity cost because yeah. that i see sometimes people are like i really want to know everything that happens there before i take that leap that shouldn't be <laughs> <laughs> yeah the prime minister of india does not become prime minister by yeah. by you know <laughs> yeah yeah that uh, that framework will not uh, work with true 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 no uh, another question that i think uh, you know a lot of people also want to ask when whenever uh, uh, we talk to some engineering leader is people who are coming in new to the field like you no know, yeah. going to start their career in tech uh, obviously like for example when you started it it obviously wasn't that attractive like everybody was not going and telling their kids that okay join into tech probably right but now obviously people are uh, you know this is a career that is talked about that okay tech you can build a great career about uh, but coming from a, a person who has a bird's eye view of the industry uh, what would you tell new people joining about the future of this industry how does it look like and what advice do you have for fresh people coming into the industry oh um, i'm not an astrologer but i'll still make a prediction <laughs> sure <laughs> I have been in tech for 20 years when tech was not or startups were not uh, the go-to uh, career for people. Yeah. I think I can see myself doing this for another 20 years and I know that the industry is just getting started dude. Like a lot of people now know about startups, a lot of people uh, I would say there is big tech, big startups. Yeah. There weren't any big startups in India till 3 years ago mm-hmm. or there were very few. and then traditional large companies are also saying hey we need to flex this muscle too we know that this is important they call it the digital revolution or yeah. they are going digital yeah 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 i just see this becoming more and more important in coming years right yeah i would give it at least next 20 years uh, that it is here to stay it's a good career the only catch is that you should love learning ha huh. ha if if you say that i learn this uh, i'll do this bachelor's or masters and for 30 years i'll just have this career tech is probably not the right place i mean this change maximum in the last 20 years yeah, again, yeah 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 i i used to code in c++ man and <laughs> i used to write uh, my unit tests in perl <laughs> <laughs> uh huge huge you want to change uh, mm. but while this hey tech is a good career is is very uh, hip to say i would just say tech is a good career if you can keep up if you can right. continue to spend time learning if you like learning right. otherwise you know 5 years 10 years down the line it will be disheartening for some people saying oh i thought tech is just do this the whole time whole life and yeah you you can but you have to continuously evolve and this is not a career you can afford to stagnate you cannot yeah yeah right right, right. Uh, because you talked about languages so so i would want to ask a question about that also and this is something that that uh, you know it's just sort of a people fresh into their careers a lot of debate around this yeah yeah is uh, that that some some companies focus a lot on their own tech stack and they hire her for that let's say you know somebody companies created in django yeah. so they want to have a round where they ask python questions and then there are also companies which really don't care at all uh, right like you know any language you come up with you give you a you know high level design question a low level design question you write it in any language yeah, that also yeah, seems yeah, to yeah. happen right yeah Uh, and then, as a result of that, what happens is that I find a lot of people, especially asking that, hey, I have been working with Java for last three, four years. Should I like stop all this and start learning Go Lang because people are hard learning Go Lang? So, so people who are trying to figure this part out right now, trying to sort of a lot of people actually from services industry getting into product, they seem to ask this question also. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what what is your opinion on this? Like languages, does it matter? Does it not matter? Like, how do you look at it when you are hiring people as well? Okay, so you know people who are trying to move from Java to GoLang, like stop learning Java and go to GoLang. I would say learn GoLang, <laughs> don't leave Java. 
<laughs> I have been coding in Java from Java 1.1, 1.2. Mm-hmm. Uh, I almost never speak about Java, but I think I have written most code in Java. Right. C++, of course, was pretty big for a couple of years, for nine years or so for me. I have written a lot of PHP, a lot of Python, Django, both Flask and Django, a lot of J- uh, Golang. Java has been there all along. <laughs> It's true, true, true. All along, it has yeah. been there. I was building telecom products. Yeah. in C++ low latency products all my enterprise management systems were in java right right so um okay there are different type of companies uh, for example i would not hire an ios developer to write my ios uh, app because they use swift and i use react native right right so Sure, for some companies it doesn't work out. Right, right. But in general, I think if you know a couple of languages, if you're good enough in one, yeah, a lot of companies are ready to consider. I've had instructions to my talent team saying I'm explicitly looking for polyglots, hmm. and I'm sure there are a lot of people who say we don't care about languages. Some people are like we only care about this language. For example, here we care about Java a whole lot. our whole stack on in cast 24 is java and we would we would like it if you already have done a lot of work in java right 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 but uh, there are plenty of companies who would say for freshers just come in are you smart are you willing to work hard have you proven somewhere that that uh, you know you are smart and you can work hard if you you have and dsl go or, or competitive programming or open source these are all proxies for us no Huh. I'm just trying to hire good people. Yes, yes, yes. People who can work hard, people who, c- who are curious so that they will keep learning, people who can work with others. And these interviews are just a way for me to assess will this person is this person a good fit. Mm-hmm. Now some people care about communication a lot more than others. Some people care about competitive programming a whole lot more than others. Some people care about frameworks a whole lot more. But all of us are trying to look for these basic traits. Right, right, right. Right. And I would say if there is a very specific company that somebody wants to join sure do what the company needs from you right but if if you are okay to join any company that excites you hmm. then there is just no reason to stick to uh, one single framework or you know jump to another framework and forget about this like we don't know each other now <laughs> right, right. Um, there was this uh, one of my friends told me about this analogy you you've seen those large diamond mines spiral mines yeah 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 they're, open they're, mines they're yeah. very very deep yeah they can't be this deep unless they get this wide tread yeah so a lot of times when we try to go deep yeah into say java and we haven't even explored what what python does or what golang does yeah. we would be limited in how much depth we can reach so end of the day we we means uh, the java developers uh, got map filter from python or some other language correct correct so i, I like to summarize um, focus on one tech stack go deep in that and keep learning right you know the surrounding areas so that your depth increases and then do what the company needs like right um, i've had people who learned erlang yeah in a couple of months because we were building something in erlang yeah and scala man uh, people also learned scala right <laughs> <laughs> no but the very i think uh, for example uh, like the example you gave for example kotlin borrowed a lot about the core routines thing because the language like go which had that and then that that changes the game a lot yeah. but but you can't really be a expert kotlin person without knowing java like like i would never hire somebody for a very say principal engineer level at kotlin uh, but they don't know how java works because if the stack will run on the jvm then you had to I would know i would say jvm yeah java i probably i don't know jvm, uh, JVM. Yes. you have yeah. to know how the jvm will be okay. working okay. oh yeah 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 so when i picked up erlang this is in my 2015 16 list thing i want to pick up erlang i don't know why uh, it is there <laughs> <laughs> uh it is super weird to learn the language yeah uh, i st- i'm still not good at it uh, but then i learned golang and i f- 
found it very easy because I had already tried to learn a lang. Okay. Um, so so I would say yeah, keep learning, keep learning new stacks, keep learning new frameworks. There's just so much to learn from frameworks like Django and Spring Boot. People, some people hate them and say okay, bloated this and that. Just look at how these frameworks are designed. The kind of developer concerns these frameworks look at. Yeah. Takes a lot of effort and a lot of thinking and a lot of hands-on implementation. See, oh, this is what most of the developers would need. Yeah, yeah. That's so. True. I would say just learn frameworks because of that. Right. I mean, I I remember uh, when Angular 2 came. Yeah. I learned RxDx, and uh, after five years, I think four years, five years, some of my team members were doing. Uh, Trying to do RxDx in Android, I'm like, oh, I know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, it's Rx Java and Rx uh, reactive JS. programming huh. type, uh, not yeah, Rxdx, yeah. Rx uh, uh, Rx Java and Rx uh, JS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It became very popular at one point uh, yeah. until Kotlin came along, and uh, I was like, hey, I I know about this. Yeah, yeah. This is the same concept. Still today, I think any uh, big app that has been like in the market for five six years, most of their internal concurrency is still Rx based. They are moving to Kotlin now. Yeah, yeah. Fresh apps are starting with uh, core routines, but I think older apps they're still moving. Um, I, and the first time I learned about this yeah. was with a library called Ace. I don't know the full form. A C E. Yeah. It was C plus plus library. Okay. That had reactors and actors and and oh. this is. I think I saw this. I used this for the first time in 2003 or 4. Okay. This is fairly old. The basic observer pattern is fairly old. Oh, <laughs> basic observer pattern is fairly yeah. old. No, but I think every framework goes through this phase where they realize that if we apply observer pattern here, state management will become easy, and then they <laughs> gets incorporated. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, a similar pattern exists in Django. The signals. I really like how how it is implemented. Right. Uh, so, uh, because we were talking about this uh, RA getting used in Android as well and Kotlin, so uh, one of the things that we have talked a lot on social media about is like uh, the importance of mobile engineering. Uh, because a lot of apps, obviously, uh, like, like even if you look at something like Uber, which is exists only on mobile. Itself. Yeah, there is nothing on web actually yeah. for them. The web has only just landing page, and uh, it's a what hundred billion dollar company, just a mobile app. Uh, and then, uh, despite that, I think uh, you have talked about that it's harder to hire mobile engineers. Mobile teams are harder to build. Uh, maybe it's a India-specific problem. So, what's your take on that? Like mobile engineering, how important is it? Like people used to say 2016 and all people used to say that this is a hype and a fad mm -hmm. and it will go away. Yeah, yeah. Hasn't gone away at least yes. as far as I can see. <laughs> so, so what's your take on it? Should more people look at mobile engineering? And why do you think like you're not able to hire senior? You're people? making me make a lot of predictions, enough. And some days, but if you don't, then who will? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, unless we come up with some minority report type of UI, <laughs> amazing UI. Uh, yeah. Mobile apps are here to stay. Yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, even more so, I would say next five years, as more people come online, as 3G, 4G, 5G happens. Yeah. More and more people would uh, use technology in their day-to-day -day life using apps. Right. And and the way I started using technology was I started creating, and probably you also started like that. You yeah. you're not a technology user to user. We started by creating building things, technology yeah. and building. A whole lot of people are just now able to experience tech right. because of mobile. It's it's kind of unfortunate that mobile or smartphones are just what, 12 years, 13 years old, yeah. and that's why there are hardly any CTOs or VP engineering with 20 years of experience who who build their career and career based on mobile. Ah, uh, that's there, yeah. And uh, that becomes a problem. A lot of senior engineers, senior mobile engineers, know that their CTO doesn't even know about mobile, and like he can run the tech team. So, so they say, okay, maybe you know this is the career is limited here, and they move, and that's one of the reasons I don't, I'm not able to hire senior mobile engineers. Right, right, right. I I I'm hoping that in the next three four years there'll be the smartphones will be 15 years old and 20 years old, yeah. and then there'll be more people who started their career 
at least five, seven years they spent on mobile and they can empathize with their mobile teams. And mobile teams know, oh, yeah, yeah, we can also, uh, you know, there is career path and career growth for us. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I feel that's uh, a very large factor yeah. contributing to not having enough mobile engineers. Right. We don't teach, we don't really, really teach mobile engineering and back-end engineering and stuff in, in colleges. Right, right, right. But we hire, I would say, at least 10 times more back-end engineers than web or mobile engineers. Right. right. So combine this with like, how many openings do you have for back-end engineers versus how many you have for mobile engineers? Right. How many senior people in the tech world come from back-end versus mobile? You have all the signals for people to not choose mobile. <laughs> Even though, like, this is the lifeline. This is the face of my app, I mean, my company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I I think a lot of us spend uh, upwards of one hour, a lot of people spend upwards of four hours yeah, yeah, yeah. on mobiles today. Yeah, there were studies which were showing there are countries where the average is like Southeast Asian countries, the averages are six, seven hours a day. <laughs> exactly. And, and we as engineering leaders have been ignoring this. <laughs> I... I have a lot of CTO friends and VP engineering friends and who are like, I have a guy, you know, senior engineer, he takes care of mobile. I have no clue how this works. I have no clue how the app gets submitted and I only know that Apple reviews because okay. I have, this escalation has come to me saying Apple rejected the build because of this, this, this and that's why I know. Yeah. Right? Like, unfortunately, that's the truth. That, um, a, a friend used a term called we are the absentee CTO. I'll probably speak about it uh, <laughs> with him uh, later. That is for 10, 15% of our team, we don't exist. For back end, we're like, hey, no, no, CTAs should not, CTO should not be coding and I don't want to, you know, give you all the solutions. But I still get involved in design discussions and I can review people's code and, and stuff. I can, I can give you a broad level estimates for something. Yeah. Right? Um, I have no clue what goes on in mobile, right? There's somebody who is running my, sh who's <laughs> somehow running my ship. Right, 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 right. Some junior guy works hard, is passionate about this, right? And a lot of startups, unfortunately, are are running exactly like this. <laughs> I'm hoping this will change as as more more mobile engineers or more mobile savvy engineers become leaders. engineering leaders. So uh, I think uh, one of the uh, things we talked about when we were planning to actually sit down was yeah, yeah. that uh, to inspire other CTOs as well. And at least uh, at my age, I know a, a lot of my friends who are running tech teams of companies who are at that verge, you know, where PMF has happened and then they have to scale. Now they have some 20, 30 engineers. They know that in the next few years it will become 200. Yeah. Uh, so I mean I uh, don't even know, but but you know what would be sort of you know both general and specific advice to such people who are sort of growing their teams. They will have to do a lot of things, I believe. Yeah. Hire yeah. people, scale the tech. It's, it's going to be a very different journey. But you have definitely seen that journey. So uh, what are some sort of words for those people who are engineering leaders of upcoming companies? Yeah. So I, there is a whole lot here. Yeah. In hiring, I know things changed for me. There is a friend Pratik Sharma. Hmm. I used to say, I used to take transcripts of all my interviews saying this is the question that I asked. These are the parts that I was trying to assess. And this person has answered like this. And I would make a summary saying these are the person's strengths and these are the person's weaknesses. And uh, I don't know why. Like I was talking to Pratik and Pratik said, what are the coachable gaps in this guy? What is that? Like Things you can teach him in a month or two. And I'm like, oh man, these weaknesses can be classified as coachable yeah. gaps and things that I can't, mm -hmm. like I as a person would probably not be able to change. So that's the first advice for a lot of people who are trying to scale and believe that the 20 engineers that are there in their team are the only good ones. Okay. Everybody else, how are these big companies running? They don't have good tech. Because you are trying to map your 20 people's experience with people who are doing something else altogether. Right, right, right. So, 
I would say find coachable gaps. Say this is something that somebody can learn even while they are serving their notice period. Right. These are the skills. So these are the attributes that we care about. Right. Um, if somebody can find a way to assess curiosity, a, I would pay and like, probably fund a startup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's one. Right. right. This constant refactoring. Yeah. Is needed. Right. And. the engineering leaders have to tell their teams that it is okay that today you're working in this team you're trying to solve this problem and tomorrow i request you to do this don't just say oh i have spent 2 years doing this yeah if you are keeping in mind that this person needs to learn certain skills this person has been probably working on on let's say something to do with recurring revenue and you're saying hey let's try and see how you work on um say a student experience in case of uh, scale of payments versus uh, experience yeah then that's a that's that has to be sold by the leader saying hey this is something new you have not done this hmm. right and that continuously will happen um as soon as possible hire some people who can start making decisions independently right as soon as possible a 200 people team if you don't have um uh, i would say at least 3 4 people who would easily become ctos of small startups right then you are carrying a lot of burden you basically don't have a good pyramid in place everything escalates to you basically then that yeah yeah and then then you crib about work life balance and burning out and what not on twitter <laughs> and, and people like me like to meditate <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah and meditate <laughs> but <laughs> but think about org structure yeah uh in my last company this is the biggest discussion that akash my manager and i used to have akash like what does your structure look like today what is your ideal structure you have to think of it like a system design problem all the time continuously and and while i have done this before multiple times Zero to hundred, two hundred, right? This focus on Akash uh, Hotstar CTO telling me, "Hey, dude, you need to think of it at your level too. And if you have a director of engineering reporting to you, they need to also think about this, right? And this also helps me again do that pitch, saying, 'Hey, this is where I see you because I have an open spot there, and somebody is being groomed to take that spot. Somebody is already." you know in a promotion cycle for 6 months they will do this job right. and if they do well they'll get promoted it's easy for me to say this is what your responsibilities would be right right, right. so think about that org structure i would say I, i think i described this how all of us were looking at growth all of us were looking at customer experience find these parallel streams right find uh what part of your team can become this horizontal platform foundation core everybody has a different word for it team that is not directly contributing to customers but is contributing to developer efficiency and contributing to i would say you know i would say foundation for for rest of the product that is being built right and we like kind of ignore it for a long time i would say at 70 80 team size is when for the first time i realized i'm missing this team and and i made this team in in one of my startups earlier right so i would say it's a, it's a lot about just uh hiring don't hire like a lot of freshers i love hiring freshers a like, lot of energy a lot of new ideas uh i don't have to ask them to work hard they just have so much to learn yeah right and they of course teach us a whole lot because they ask the questions that we have not asked ourselves uh, for 2 years but if you hire a lot of freshers and you don't have people to coach them groom them mentor them you're setting them up for failure they will go out in a couple of years and say oh man i didn't learn anything there and now i'm learning so much here right right and that happens with a lot of people like my first company i was there for 2 years i didn't learn much but then i joined another company i learned so much why because there was somebody the 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 pyramid was sorted or the org structure was sorted right right so i would say yeah, think about org structure think about this uh, parallel how many parallel streams uh, you can run that that don't really 
as much as possible don't clash with each other right. and think of layers if you can think of layers saying this team builds this layer this layer doesn't change very frequently they probably do a drop every two months instead of you know, release every day or do five releases every day maybe there are teams that are working on longer term projects yeah i mean going from yeah going from 5 to 20 i think there is a there is a inflection point at, at 15 20 when you start thinking about on calls for the first time yes 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh then uh, at 50 you you start saying oh man our stand up is taking 2 hours like, okay i don't need to be in all stand ups you know run your own stand ups maybe we can do a scrum of scrum and maybe not mm. right and then at at 120 or so again uh, say oh you know as i said 80 you need this platform team yeah. at at 120 again you you feel like okay now i have people who have people reporting to them and i have no connect with them on a regular basis yeah and at 200 you have three layers yeah right and and then as as um, i would say i use random.org a whole lot hmm. i put my whole team in the random.org i do a list two people every day i reach out and say let's talk right right so you have to find ways to meet your skip level skip to skip level understand what problems they have and you're not you're not distrusting your your reportees by doing this you're helping them huh. by gathering more data points by getting gathering more anecdotes by saying hey are you looking at this problem i have heard this three times yeah 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 and it's right so yeah i i would say a lot changes uh, as as you know team grows from yeah uh, 2 to to 200 right right your day changes <laughs> <laughs> day changes so this was more about the org uh, design and the org structure side of the things another question that a lot of people scaling up their tech also seem to have is people are not even aware like if you have never uh, made a product which is used by maybe 1 lakh people or 1 million people mm. uh, then you don't get to know what problems even come uh, say for example somebody starting out a startup first 10000 people you would probably not even need a ci cd setup uh, i i would probably say you still should set up you should set up but i'm <laughs> saying somebody who's setting up first time they have not even needed it so mm. they have say not set it up mm. so but there is going to be a day where they can't even operate without it oh yeah where 10000 users you can operate without it because you have operated from day zero like that <laughs> so like that uh, in your experience what are some tech challenges that sort of come when you scale and what mm. new things happen because somebody who has never run an org which is you know catering to 10 million people they would never know those things even come mm. i have a tip for people like this spam people on linkedin and twitter right yeah. say you have this question you want to answer yeah everybody likes to give gyan like me <laughs> uh, they will share their learnings yeah they will answer your questions people are uh, people are amazing at this yeah people just don't understand that you can reach out to the biggest cto vp engineering out there who seem to have done this journey Yeah. and say i want to learn how you have done this and they will take time out in their calendar right for you you have never met them you will still do it right but the, the tech industry is amazing that way <laughs> so first that but yes um i think a lot of these challenges come because of the micro services this is a bit controversial but yeah and thankfully people have documented that yeah so i still tell all my friends that we start with a monolith hmm run your business prove that you know, people like what you're doing and get to a place where this starts becoming a problem and then then split i i love this pattern called strangler pattern i don't know if you've heard of it yeah 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 this is my favorite microservices pattern i have used it a whole lot <laughs> uh use that and move out yeah. uh, your microservices later but as microservices pro- pro- proliferate that's when this deployment automation your green blue or or something as simple as how do i make sure all my logs are available at the same place mm-hmm. how do i make sure my monitoring is available at the same place how can i do uh, you know auto scale or auto heal if you want to use that word yeah right how can i manage number of connections to my databases right. like people have developed proxies 
for just managing number of connections to readers i think uh, twitter developed that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, all of these problems thankfully the, the problems that come with microservices in last 10 years we have documented them and said okay these are all the things that you will go through yeah. these are all the solutions that others have done that you can also do i i think that problem is uh, it, the answer to that is just read and talk to others and and you would say hey oh okay this is the problem i didn't think about this i i still remember we had this big queue i don't know if you know there's a there's a awesome java library called big queue it allows you to make persistent queues on your machines oh yeah yeah, yeah. your machine can down go down and come yeah. up and it's uh, amazing yeah 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 i have seen heard about it yeah. but it's a state it makes your machine stateful yeah in the first time a big queue installation we were moving out i was like oh this is a problem <laughs> we'll have to rewrite this part yeah 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 right now those kind of problems those kind of decisions that you have already taken of course uh, i i don't i won't say don't make those decisions it's a, it's a good library you still do it uh, monoliths rock <laughs> oh monoliths are rocks <laughs> uh, but but when you are splitting you kind of go through a lot of these problems thankfully they are already document well documented and you can just read about them talk to your friends who have done this and and solve these problems maybe there's engineering blogs of the big companies they often yeah, yeah. Uh, come and with those yeah a lot of good advice is there like the reason i can enumerate these is because somebody sent me a pitch deck saying these are the problems that microservices have solved this problem is still not solved we are solving this problem i wouldn't say what they are solving for but yeah i was like yeah it makes sense yeah 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 right so i i think the problems are known they're not it's not like you're discovering something completely new people have done this before to learn from them Right. that's that's my advice really uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel um in a lot of this if you want to sure uh, that's why that's how new stuff comes up a lot of times i think that a lot of people who create these new open source projects they do this because they don't know that the alternatives exist right and they do such a good job that they become the standard <laughs> so i i wouldn't say hey don't solve these problems from first principles it helps to right 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 so thank you so much for all of those answers so i think uh, we have gone through many of the questions that that uh, come through even from the people that come through so yeah, yeah. that that's uh, so thank you so much for taking out your time giving these answers i think my personally biggest takeaway has been your uh, this uh, try and buy term because i found i think the maximum number of people who got in touch with me saying that acha jeet is coming so maybe this question about okay uh, which which track in career to go towards and all of that so i really uh, like that try and buy i will i'll plug uh, cash 24 here <laughs> we do a lot of test drives right and then people buy our cars right 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 <laughs> we have confidence on our cars and our quality to say hey right you know let them try it they'll buy it right it's the same right if if you're doing this for buying a 5 lakh rupees car do this for your career <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so that's that's uh, great and uh, i think the learnings for the ctos in terms of org design obviously very useful i will I'll drop in uh, your uh, linkedin and twitter handles also with the video so if anybody okay. wants some tips on org structure design when they're growing their teams they can reach out but yeah thank you so much uh, for coming in it was really great talking to you thank you so much anav uh, i love the questions they made me think uh... a whole lot <laughs> and uh, i think i have material for my blog now <laughs> oh nice <laughs> good take away <everyone. laughs> only after you publish your podcast sure 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 okay thank you all right thanks enough